Welcome back. On Viewpoint today, we assess the impact of high interest rates on ordinary people and their lives, especially South Korea's benchmark interest rate currently stands above that of the U.S. For more, I have Professor Che sang yum from Yonsei University here in the studio. Professor Che, it's good to see you again. Glad to be back here. I also have Professor Oh Jun-suk at Sung-myung Women's University joining us live on the line. Professor Oh, it's good to have you on. Uh, good afternoon. Right, Professor Che, South Korea's key interest rate stands at 2.25%, while that in the U.S. stands at 1.75%. Simply speaking, what are the implications of South Korea possessing an interest rate that is perhaps stronger than that of the U.S.? Well, about two weeks ago, the Bank of Korea raises policy rate by 50 basis points. So now its uh, benchmark rate is higher than that of the Federal Reserve. So in principle, uh, the monetary policy by the central bank affects the prices of all kinds of assets, especially for bonds. So uh, given the inverse relationship between prices of the bond and its yields, uh, <clears throat> the old interest rate went off after the meeting. So from an international investor's perspective, this indicates that investing in Korea gives a higher rate of returns than investing in the U.S. if other things equal. So, uh, <clears throat> which could result in capital inflows to Korea, especially in terms of portfolio bond investment. Uh, for the same reason, it also gives some room for uh, uh, the central bank to design its future policy, uh, future monetary policy, because if the Korean Ben, uh, Korean benchmark rate is lower than that of the Federal Reserve, it will induce so uh, outf capital outflows for the same reason, uh, which will have a depreciation pressure on the Korean currency. So weakening one will increase the imported prices, which will again increase inflation that is already high enough. Right, it really is. Professor, BOK Governor Lee Chang-yong has said that this year's the country's base rate will hover between 2.75 and 3% by the end of this year. Can we assume that inflation here on the local front will be tamed with this rate range? Uh, uh, thank you, Sunny. Uh, POK's reference rate decision is influenced uh, not only by local economic factors, but uh, by international uh, policy factors about the central bank's rate decision. Uh, I'd like to focus on economic factors. Uh, it is not likely to kill down inflationary pressure so long as Ukraine, uh, Ukraine crisis continues. Uh, as interest rate changes are closely related to expected inflation, uh, what the BOK governor Lee Chang-yong commented is about when is the time inflation will peak, explained in the sense that uh, the peak will be reached uh, late in the third quarter or early in the fourth quarter, uh, and also price will remain high for some time, and then soft landing declining gradually rather than falling abruptly. Moreover, he emphasized the core inflation has risen by over 4%. Uh, here, the core inflation, uh, not including such external factors as energy and uh, food prices, is long-term inflation based upon uh, the economic fundamentals. Uh, when it is too high, no wonder that the monetary policy mode is uh, responding preemptively uh, before inflation accelerates. What others the BOK government counted in uh, was the internal economic factors of Korea, uh, along with prolonged external uncertainties, uh, industrial transformation, and restructuring of Korea would be expected in longer terms. In this respect, it might be uh, possible to trigger a financing need and then affordable to bear beyond range over 3% base rate. Right, I see. And Professor Che, staying with the broad impact of the BOK's benchmark interest rate, how do further rate hikes look to affect loans here on the local front? Well, as I said earlier, an increase in the benchmark rate will increase all the other interest rate, including bank deposit and lending rate and mortgage rate and probably consumer credit rate. So in general, uh, given the same size of increase in the benchmark rate, the path through will be higher for the loans if borrowers are perceived as risky. That being said, uh, monetary policy tightening could have particularly adverse effects on loans towards the vulnerable, including low-income households, and self-employees who is already suffering from the pandemic. So in this sense, monetary policy tightening could, could increase inequality, and that explains why the new government is trying to alleviate that burden of the vulnerable. Right, I see. Meanwhile, Professor, what is the impact of high interest rates on investments? 
Uh, interest rate hike generally the override of impacts uh, because interest rate in the capital market refers to cost of capital. And not to mention our borrowing cost increase, uh, when you get a loan, it takes the uh, role of a harder rate. Investment project could be feasible only if the rate of return is greater than the harder rate. Uh, when and the hot rate goes higher and higher, uh, naturally it becomes more and more difficult to clear the hurdle. Uh, to fuel the survival, uh, you can guess investment opportunities will be dwindled as research. Interest rate high case also interpreted as increasing marginal rate, uh, the minimum guaranteed rate of return for investors. Uh, when the project uh, need additional investment, you should have to have a cost saving plan or restructuring plan in the project. Machine and robotics replaces labor. It's already going on service robot in a restaurant, assistance robot in the hospital, uh, and the security robot in the factory. It is not that extreme, uh, strange when uh, kiosk machine take orders. Uh, in brief, it starts a period of lean time and triggers uh, the tide and bail the property uh, for many Koreans. Right, I see. And staying with investments, Professor Shah, do you propose that investments uh, beyond Korea if the BOK's rate continues to stand above that of the U.S.? Well, I'm not really in a position to propose uh, inv investment strategy, especially given my poor investment records. But let me just tell you some you know, general principle. All right. So it's true that the benchmark interest rate is uh, one of the most important factors determining the uh, asset prices and rate of return. But we should uh, not only consider the present interest rate, but also its expected future path. So, uh, <coughs> in, uh, in <coughs> so in this sense, according to last FOMC meeting and the forecast of market participants, the Federal Reserve is very likely to raise uh, its rate by 75 basis point tonight. So which will make the interest rate differential between Korea and the U.S. turn into negative. And I believe the gap between the two is going to become even larger toward the end of the year. And that's because uh, a market consensus for the uh, Fed's uh, policy rate by the end of 2020 is uh, slightly below 4 percent. But the same goes for around 3 percent, as uh, Professor O already uh, mentioned. So uh, if interest rate reversal continues uh, over time, uh, it would provide uh, even further depreciation pressure on one. So in this sense, having a dollar denominated asset could be a good option for domestic investors. Of course, uh, you know, making a profit out of uh, financial market is really difficult and you have to move very quick. So in this sense, I strongly recommend you to pay a greater attention not only to uh, interest rate differential, but also inflation differential. Uh, that's because, uh, you know, because of this uh, ultra accommodative monetary policy by most of central banks around the world, the interest rate gap, I mean, across the world is very narrow, like, a, you know, couple of uh, percentage point and maximum. But inflation differential is like 5%, like 3%, which is much large, uh, larger number. And eventually this inflation differential will uh, affect or determine the interest rate differential in the future. Right, and I'm taking notes on that. Professor, uh, moving beyond that then, I assume higher interest rates would reflect favorably on savings accounts. Do you care to elaborate? Uh, Sonny, you raises a very good point. While some effect can be negative for consumers, for example, interest rate on your credit card balance may go up. A rate hike could have a positive impact on your savings account. Uh, but there is a catch of time lag. Even if the uh, BOK boosts up its base rate, it will take a while to see that reflected in your bank account. As savers uh, stashed away so much money during the pandemic, as so the bank don't need to compete with each other. A bank has enough money to allocate. Uh, as a matter of fact, we are more likely to experience the negative impact of a higher rate uh, than the positive. Uh, what I mean, uh, borrowing money uh, from a bank will cost more and more. Uh, they could compound the inflation strain. A uh, finance theory tells investing is another potential hedge against inflation. Uh, at time of higher uh, interest rate, uh, return are uh, never guaranteed, as uh, Professor Chek commented, but uh, there is the potential for higher gains uh, than you can get otherwise. If you don't need money uh, for uh, more than uh, five years, then investing could be a smart way of inflation hedging.
Right. Professor Chair, how do you respond to concerns that continued interest rate hikes raises the risk of recession? Well, in general, the central bank raises policy rate for uh, either because of uh, rising inflation or because of st too strong uh, real side of the economy. And obviously, the current continued uh, interest rate hike is driven by the first reason, not the second one. So in this sense, together with weakening economy, uh, the continued continued rate hike will definitely increase the risk of recession, both in Korea and in the U.S. So in this sense, the BOK is in a very difficult environment. Given the strong dollar and monetary tightening in the U.S., uh, to some extent, continued rate hike is like inevitable. Uh, but the problem is uh, that monetary tightening alone is uh, unlikely tame inflation uh, unless uh, uh, the geopolitical risk surrounding Ukraine and Russia is alleviated. So adding to that, Korea is a small open economy which is heavily influenced by external factors such as uh, global inflation or U.S. Uh, economic condition, which is completely uh, out of the BOK's control. So uh, in this sense, uh, unless the geopolitical risk is alleviated, there is nothing much uh, they can do about inflation, but we still should uh, trust our central bankers. So uh, the central bank governor, Chang Yong Ri, uh, who is uh, one of the smartest people I ever met, and his excellent staff will uh, do their job. And you know, the credibility of the central bank is a necessary condition for the successful monetary policy. And lastly, let me add to uh, the, the, the risk of uh, uh, coming recession. So uh, if you look at the housing market and the potential effects of monetary policy tightening on the housing market, uh, we shouldn't forget that the Korea, in Korea, a lion's share of uh, mortgage loans in is uh, contracted in the variable term, not in fixed term. It's, the number is about 80%, which makes mortgage interest rate very sensitive to uh, mon changes in the monetary policy. So uh, continued uh, interest rate hike will increase the debt service cost of households who took on leverage, uh, which will reduce their demand for housing and eventually housing prices. And given the fact that this uh, housing value could be uh, affecting your consumption, that will add to a downside risk for uh, the possibility of recession in the near term. Right, unfortunately, of course. Professor, the U.S. Federal Reserve, as Professor Chair has mentioned, is holding its mm -hmm. July meeting on this Wednesday local time. Now, most believe a 75 basis point increase will be announced, while a few are predicting a 100 basis point hike. What are your prospects? Uh, I suppose 75 BP hike as a uh, preemptive measure to tackle the inflation could be better, uh, so long as the labor market and consumer spending hold constant and strong. Uh, but 100% uh, BP hike at one time can hardly be imagined. Uh, that is because interest rate hike in an economy seems like uh, pressing the brake pedal when you drive a car from the top down to the foothill. Uh, here, the speed of the car is inflationary pressure. According to the survey of American economists, it is forecast that the Fed will raise uh, the uh, uh, raise uh, uh, raise a uh, raise rate by another 25 basis point in early 2023, reaching a peak of 3.75 percent before pausing and starting to cut rates before the end of the year. The year-end forecast for the Fed fund rate is now 3.4 percent, well up uh, from 1.9 percent in March, and now generally in line with market expectation, uh, it is. Uh, uh, I, I mean that uh, 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 it is expected after uh, peaking at 3.75% uh, uh, next year, uh, and then the rate will begin falling again, ending uh, 2024 uh, back below 3.5% and 2.5% uh, 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 after longer terms. Right, hopefully that will be the case. All right, Professor, as always, thank you very much for your time and your thoughts. And Professor Chair here in the studio, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you. Thank you.